It's time for the good news. With Lunchbox. Tell me something good. Jeff Green was shopping with his family at Trader Joe's in Wayne, New Jersey, when they're in the dessert section. Like, ah, what should we get? And they start talking to one of the employees named Tara, and she's like, oh, the key lime pie is excellent. It's like, all right, they get a key lime pie, put it in their cart, and they go to the front to check out. And Tara shows up at the cash register is like, nope, I want to buy you that key lime pie. Just as a, you know, you guys were nice to me. I want to do something nice for you. So she bought them the key lime pie, and they're like, man, that's crazy. And like a week later, like, we need to return the favor. So they went in, got a key lime pie, went home, baked it, and brought it back and gave it to Kara. So they, the key lime pie wasn't fully made? Wasn't fully baked? No, no, you got to put it in the oven okay. and like, like I guess, bake it. That's very nice. I I thought key lime pies were already made when you did the store. But I I heard you'd never been to Trader Joe's. I've never been to Trader Joe's. I've driven by it before. I've seen it. Yeah, I've never driven by. People yeah. seem to love it. Like, it's like a cult following. Yeah, they have some I would agree with that. good items that you like, only oh. get there. Everybody's like, you haven't been to Trader Joe's. They got the best this. Or you haven't had their this. I'm like, no, no. I've never had anything of theirs because I've never been there. I'd never been either until a couple years ago. I don't really grocery shop, though. But you do a little bit, don't what, you? What is it? So, what's so special about it? Can I can say they have some special items, but then also they have really good prices on produce and flowers so, and cheese. So if you're getting produce, flowers, and cheese, that's the place for you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and nuts. I really don't find a big difference in any of them. But, again, I don't do a lot of grocery shopping. Man, grocery shopping. That is, it is very stressful to grocery shop. Like, if you're like, I'll get you this, this, and this. And you go and you're just like, I have no idea where any of this is. It is so hard. If you went you, more, it wouldn't be stressful. And you look like an idiot walking up and down the aisle and looking and looking. Well, there are a looking. lot of people, though, that are doing, I would think that, too. But there are a lot of people that are doing the, the shopping, the Instacart. But they, they seem to know where everything is. Well, they're always looking, though, with their phone out. Because they That's have to true. look and see what they're going to get. So... I just act like I'm an Instacart. But did you know there's something cool that you can now do on your phone? Like my wife can make a like a list and it can show up on my phone and I can put little checks next to it. It is it's incredible. And the year 2017 is really Dude, slapping, huh, buddy? She did that to me the other day because I usually <laughs> had to call her and be like, hey, what was that you wanted? Or And make sure I, miss, I always get home and miss something. But this time she shared the list with me. You just hit the checks. And I could put green checks by it. And I was like, this is awesome. I think we figured out what a little reward system for him might be. Check marks. No, no. <laughs> I didn't care about check marks. It's just usually I get He didn't home. want to get in trouble at home more uh, than he wanted to do it yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because I usually forget something on the list. <laughs> all right, nice job. That's what it's all about. That was Tell Me Something Good. Bobby Bone, come on. All right, let's go get the morning corny. The morning corny. What do people like to listen to while they're fishing? What do people like to listen to while they're fishing? Something catchy. Uh, of course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was the morning corny. So we went to San Francisco and we spent about an hour with Steve Young, who's a Hall of Fame quarterback. And he was talking about Reggie White, who was the guy that he hated going against because he was huge and he was dominant. And on the field, he was really mean. But then he would baptize people because he was also a pastor. And so he was talking about that and how hard he was to go against, but then they would go to the Pro Bowl, and this was the story. We'd go to the Pro Bowl in Hawaii, and uh, he would have a revival, and everyone was invited. And so he'd go down, and then he was like, who wants to be baptized? And the guys would say, I will. And then they'd go out to the ocean and baptize all these Pro Bowlers. That's like, awesome. I love that. That's Reggie, man. That's Reggie. So for the game, he would kill people. Oh, wow. Just demolish people. One of the best ever. And then after the game, he'd lead in prayer, and then he'd go and baptize everybody in Hawaii. During the Pro Bowl. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't think that people like that, that have that soft spirit, that heart could get mean on the field or like tough. I asked him, is Mount Rushmore of music? Strangely, Al Green. <laughs> Can I have Earth, Wind, and Fire like the whole group? Yes. yes. Okay. You too. Well, I think I've run out of places because Bruce Springsteen has to be there as well. But now I have to have a space for Chris Stapleton. Just move everyone move over. This, this, guy, <laughs> this guy needs a space. Can we add a fifth? You box? need a fifth head? You need like a check. <laughs> yeah, but, but I think that I, I just, dude is amazing. Yeah. One day I want to meet him. So Steve Young, we did an hour with him. It's awesome. I did ask him too. I was like, hey, you're so famous for being a football player. And that's all you did your whole life. That was his entire identity for the most part with sports. Like people knew him from that. Like what's it like? to just be a normal dude after you retire. I always tell people when they're transitioning, it's a death, like treat it that way, like it died. And now you gotta mourn it, and now you have to go through the pain of it all and all the 12 steps, and 
and come out and then say, okay, then what's the future? I'm going to go try to be great at something else. So you know what he does? Mm -hmm. He does like private equity. Wow. He's got a whole office. Very different. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that's such good advice, no matter what your field. Like if, you've, if that's been what you have known most of your life and it's become part of your identity, is really grieving that. It's an awesome interview. Go check out 25 Whistles. We put it up yesterday afternoon with Steve Young if you want to listen to it. You send an email and we read it on the air. It's something we call Bobby's Mail Tag. Yeah. Hello, Bobby Bones. I'm shocked and embarrassed to even be writing this, but I've just learned... There's been a complaint lodged against me at work. I received notice from my HR department that a complaining coworker took issue with the fact that I told them to suck it up buttercup when they didn't want to do their job. <laughs> Her point is buttercup is a sexist term and that I'd never said that to a man. I have probably six male coworkers who would disagree with that argument, but I put it to you. Is suck it up buttercup really sexist? Can I get reprimanded for this? Signed, co-worker getting canceled. If it's a job where HR can be called in at any time, you probably shouldn't be saying, suck it up, buttercup. But it's a saying, though. Yeah, I, it's not I, sexist. It's not sexist. No. If he was like, suck it up, sweetheart, darling, babe, baby girl, then that's in that category. I just want to be telling people to suck it up when it's a corporate job mm -hmm. and you could get in trouble for anything that you're doing. If they're not working, and I hate the, the corporate chain. If they're not working to how you'd like them to work, you just need to go and tell somebody, like the little tattletale that, that those situations need. Because she just tattled on you. And now you get an HR complaint. It's I mean, not sexist, but suck it up, buttercup, by someone who's a little too sensitive. Sure. I mean, but you do say it to a dude when they're being a little girl. <laughs> no, I don't. I, I, I do. I'm like, suck it up, buttercup. Come on. Like that, when they're being a I little just, girl. I say it if somebody's not doing the work. I'm like, let's go. Suck it up, buttercup. Let's go. I don't say it about somebody being, I don't even know if that means a little girl. What does that mean? <laughs> well, I don't just being like know. a chick. I'm being a little sissy girl. Like, come yeah, on. Yeah, no, I don't use it in the same context. That's the way I look at it. Okay. Like, you say, suck it up, buttercup. That means, like, rub some dirt on it, but you, but to a guy. That's being like a little, acting like a little girl. You don't suck it up, buttercup. Uh, oh, okay. That would be like, quit whining. Like, suck it up, buttercup. Yeah. But I don't think whining is a little girl thing. Ah, whining is pretty much a female thing. Sounds like now if Lunchbox said suck it up, buttercup to a male coworker, he could, the male could go to HR. The say, origin of the expression suck it up, buttercup is from a thing that happened to World War II airplane pilots. If they vomited into their oxygen masks, they had to suck it up or they would breathe acidic fumes of the vomit and would die. Ah. Uh. Suck it up, Whoa. Buttercup. That took a whole new meaning. Suck it up, Buttercup is disgusting. I mean, airline pilot, war, it's, not, it's pretty masculine. Greg, here's what we learned from this, or whatever your name is. Coworker getting canceled. Maybe I said the guy's name I shouldn't have. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> this is supposed to be an anonymous um, person. If you're working at a job where people are going to complain, don't say things like suck it up, Buttercup, to men or women. Just say, I'm having an issue with the amount of work that you're putting in. What can we do to make this better? Although we do say suck it up, buttercup around here. But this is not the normal job. Na guy not named Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Guy's not named Greg, everybody. Okay, there we go. Close it up. We got your email and we read it on the air. Now it's time to close Bobby's mailbag. Yeah. There's a haunted house a little bit down the road from us where the guy's like, I will pay you $20,000 if you can get all the way through it. And the haunted house is like eight to 10 hours long. It is in the news in July not for a good reason at all. The guy's finally in trouble. We'll talk about what happened with that haunted house next. Come on. The Bobby Bone Show. Yeah. Thanks for kicking off your day with the Bobby Bone Show. Case 100.7. The Bobby Bone Show. There's a haunted house that's a couple hours from us. And we talk about it every Halloween. And they offer $20,000. Anybody who can complete its 8 to 10 hour tour. There's a 40 page waiver. It's a whole situation. Well, this guy now, who has the haunted torture house, has been charged with attempted murder. Like torture murder? Like like or? murder in the haunted house or like murder outside, like a different entity. The creator owner, Russ McCamey, has been arrested for strangling a woman twice. Oh. oh my gosh. It doesn't seem to me like this was part of the haunted house. No, it sounds like it was a different experience. But what it sounds like to me is this guy might that might have been his thing all along. Yeah, is it a red flag if you create This is me just, I'm just coming up with something in my head here. Yeah. So this is all my thoughts. A legend. This, well, I'm, that part that I read was not a legend. It just says, has been arrested for strangling a woman. Yeah. And attempted murder. Mm. 
McCamey Manor is known worldwide for being the most intense and horrific haunted house. The institution was subject to a Hulu documentary, and brave souls who wish to test their limits are required to sign an in-depth 40-page waiver before they step foot in the place. Videos of people who have ventured inside seem to show that the experience is more akin to torture than a scary good time. This from Taste of Country. And so Russ McCamey is his name. He already had to be a weirdo, right? Just to do what he Okay. Yes. He was getting his job. In my opinion, he's getting his jollies by doing this more than he was. My second your opinion. Anything else. And I think that he was thinking with all this torture stuff in the haunted house, someone would eventually, I don't know. No, maybe not. McCamey was arrested on domestic assault after oh. he allegedly strangled his girlfriend on July 17th. But it doesn't end there. McCamey was detained on a $1,000 bond in order not to contact the woman. They then learned of another incident that happened the day that he was booked. He allegedly did something else to the woman and then strangled her again to the point she nearly lost consciousness. As a result, he was charged with attempted second-degree murder and uh, BAPE. Oh. And his bond was increased to $100,000. Oh. Yeah, I don't feel like this is a good guy to be around. Yeah, he has to have some sadistic tendencies to have a haunted house like that. Mm. Right? Isn't that what you would say? I'd say, yeah. I'd say you're pretty right. Well, Mike D., was it you that was calling this all along? That was like, this is a bad idea? Yeah, when we were trying to send lunchbox, I was like, no, I think this guy is just into this. Like, this mm. is what he enjoys doing. It's not just being scary. It's... Literally torturing people. Yeah, it sounds like, in my opinion, some jollies was gotten by anybody who would come to this house. They would pull people's teeth out. Oh! oh and they would, for real, do that? Yeah, for real, oh, do that. And who would sign up for that? <laughs> Did he ever pay the $20,000? No Did anybody ever, ever pay the $20,000? No one ever completed it. It was like eight to ten hours. <laughs> it's no, impossible. No one ever completed no. it because he would just continue to level it up. Yeah, like, how are you going to survive that? Hey, we were talking about bears earlier, and this woman was on a walk, and she got mauled. There were a group of bears, but one of them really got her. And when the bear bit onto her head, her hair clip exploded. Pff, and the bear was like, ow, let go of her. That's when she escaped. So that was earlier. Here's another one. A man was riding his bike and he was surprised when he ran up on a female grizzly uh -oh. and her two cubs. That's it. The Along man the put his bike between himself and the bear. That's not Thing. which prevented him from being hurt as the bear continued to make contact with the bike. So the bear was letting the bike have it. And then the bear got through the bike and the dude punched the bear in the face. Oh. Like took his fist and punched the bear right in the nose because nothing else he could do. He remembered hearing a story where a man punched a bear in the nose. So he did it as hard as he could. The bear went, Arr! grabbed his nose and ran off into the bush. Wow, that worked oh. out for him. He just won a UFC that... fight against a bear, a grizzly bear. <laughs> oh, I, I feel like... Grizzlies are, they're black bears, right? So you're supposed to, we learned last, when you talked about it last, if it's brown, lay down. If it's black, run, don't look back. And he That's punched why, good it. Night. <laughs> it was why good night. He was why good night. I thought that was for sharks. You're supposed to punch a yeah, shark, shark in the, in the eyes. Yeah, they punch anything in the face if it's your last resort. A human, a shark, a or bear. Or poke them in the eyes. Blind them. They said the best way to handle a bear attack is to avoid an encounter altogether. Yeah, no uh, crap. And the best way to not get beat up in that haunted house is not to go. Yeah. But that's the story. Oh. He was riding his bike. If the bear hadn't been probably protective of its cubs, probably wouldn't have happened. Meaning I don't think this bear was just rabid and ready to attack. You can't outrun a bear on your bike, can you? I don't know. Bears can go really fast. Yeah. I think it depends on where you are and how fast you are. Is it a road bike? Are you on a road? <laughs> then maybe. Are but, you on a mountain bike? Why you, not? It depends how tight the trees are. Black bears can run like 35 miles an hour or so. Oh, 35, 40 miles yeah, an hour. I, I'm done. Which is faster than humans or dogs or any of that. Yeah. But if you're with your dog or another friend, you don't have to be, have to run 35. You just got to be faster than them. That's right. Oh, I thought you said you just got to pick them up and throw no, them. No, no, no. Like, like in that situation. <laughs> be faster like, than them and that's what gets like, caught. Like honestly. Yeah. In that situation, the bear comes. Are you jumping in front of your wife? I'm telling her to run. And then I'm going to strategically find a way to distract the bear until I can, till she gets far enough away. What are you going to do? Throw your wife into the bear? I mean, at that point, it's survival of the fittest. <laughs> I, I mean, I really, I, I mean, I think that's just how the world I works. I don't think you would do that. I think I would be like, you need to go. I'm going to figure something out. And I don't know what I would figure out. I also had bear spray. We would go and shoot Breaking Bobby Bones in like Montana. And they were like, here's bear spray in case you get attacked by a bear. And they were like, don't spray the bear with the bear spray. What? They spray it on the ground. And then it lifts and the bear comes through it. You're out of your mind. Why would you not spray it out of them? Exactly.
That sounds like I mean, can you just like draw a line? Like you draw a barrier in the I don't ground. Think oh yeah, like you cross that, that line, Bear, and we're bear, gonna I'm gonna sue you. <laughs> if you cross that line, we're going to court. <laughs> Thanks for waking up with the Bobby Bone Show on Case 100.7. I did something yesterday that I've never done in my entire life. I did not do it on purpose. But I got to work yesterday and something wasn't right, and I started to get this little bitty headache. And that little bitty headache kept getting worse and worse when my vision started to be blurred. By the time I got home, my vision was blurring. It's fine driving. I was like, man, something's not right. And my, my vision is not good anyway, so I deal with bad vision all the time. I get home and my head starts to kill me. And I leave work as soon as I can walk out the door, which rarely happens. And I was like, I'm out. And so I go home and I sit on the floor next to a chair and I pass out for three hours. Like you sleep, don't, like a nap? I, I don't or even like, remember. I don't remember what happened. All no. I know is my phone is blowing up. I missed a meeting. Oh, I that had doesn't a me- happen. Never. And not only that, I had a meeting with the NFL. Oh, okay. So I missed my first ever meeting. Mm-hmm. Ever. And I had a meeting with the NFL. My phone is blowing up. I, I'm like, what? I, you know when you wake up and you don't know what time it is or if it's daylight or dark? Yeah. Because I have or weird sleeping hours. We have blackout curtains. I didn't know where I was. I'm on the floor, my head's on a chair, three hours, I'm out. And it was like 1.30. So I was like, is it 1.30 in the morning or is it 1.30 in the day? My wife comes in and is like, are you okay? I'm like, I think, why? She goes, everybody started calling me. I thought you were dead. They said, you missed a meeting. I couldn't get a hold of you. Find my iPhone. For some reason, find my iPhone wasn't working. So as my stepdad, Arkansas Keith, would say, yesterday was a piss poor day. I just felt terrible all day and I feel like I've shaken most of it, but I wasn't like sick, like, bleh. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm concerned, like, I'm curious about the meeting and what that is all about. And I- Well, thanks for asking. Don't miss more a, things, but- Oh, oh, oh not bit. the meeting. Oh, good, no. I am I'm curious I've about that. I've never once missed a meeting, I'm, just gone through it. I'm more concerned about your health or what caused that or what's happening. And do you have a doctor's appointment? No, nah, I'm, I'm a raw dog in this thing. Okay. That sounds smart. <laughs> awesome. Well, it looks better today, right? I mean, well, yeah. Hey, look at me. Woo! You were like, you were like, oh, my head. Like, under your breath. I don't even know if you knew you were saying it out loud, really, because I, I could just hear you be like, oh, my head. It you was like a weird that. headache, too, where, you know, if you see, like, in a cartoon, somebody's running from far away, and they slowly run up on you. That's what it felt like with a headache. Not a normal headache. It was like, huh, look at that. Oh, here it comes. Just like a hint of hey, a headache. Bugs Bunny's coming through the tunnel right at me. And then my vision got blurred. I was out. So... I didn't do crap yesterday. Sat around the house. I was gonna work out, and my no. wife. I know, I know. <laughs> my wife was like, "Why? Well, I was like, Why are you gonna work out? You can barely stand up." And I was like, "I know." I just, she goes, "If you're just working out to check a box, don't work out to check a box." And so, I worked on the show and I played some NCAA football, and that was it. Didn't have a very good day. But what I'm told is, you guys have brought some stories that made me feel better. Do you have those? Yeah, I mean, well, oh, that's we, that's so we sweet just of you. Heard it was. A bad day, and we thought, well, there's got to be some news out there that well, could brighten your day. Here's the worst part. I couldn't find my car yesterday in the parking lot. Now, you may wonder, the parking lot is small, and you have your own space. It wasn't in the space. Scuba had taken it to shoot social media, and I'm dying. And I walk out, and my car is not there. And he's like, we're coming around the car. I'm standing on the street, like, begging for my car to show up. I'm dying on the inside, bit by bit. And here comes Scuba and Lunchbox, <laughs> driving up in my car in my Hyundai. And I was like, guys, I got to go. So, it's a rough one. Well, so yeah, he didn't even let us pull back in the garage. No, he was like, no, just, I was like, just right get down out the street. of there. We're like, get it out. Okay, I got to go. Right, well, so right. after we make you feel better yeah, with yeah, our yeah. stories, are you going to be able to tell us what happened with the NFL or is that going to bring you back down? I, I missed a meeting. But you don't even know what it was. What was it about? Like, can you talk about it? What? Why would you have a meeting with the NFL? Exactly. <laughs> I didn't set it. <laughs> oh. I think they wanted to offer me a job playing quarterback or something. They heard I've been training. Okay. Well. That's what I was curious about. Okay, what do you have for me? Let me hear something. Make me feel good. Mine's actually all about your your gift, and I want to make sure that you realize, My gift. like your gift. You of give me a gift. Being left-handed. Oh, uh, got it. And like the many things, Go which ahead. it's it's interesting. You had a meeting with the NFL because I saw that left-handed people tend to be far more athletic. And I know you've been working on your athletic ability, working with pro athletes, mm, shooting all you. these sports events, and so just wanted to throw that out there. But that's not even the main thing. You're more creative, you're more athletic, you face life challenges better. But the big one that stood out to me is I just want to let you know that you have better mental flexibility and you can adapt to new situations. So if you have a new you coming your way with whatever this is, you're passing out, you're going to adapt. 
You're here to persevere. Maybe I should, whatever that brain scan was. And that's, that was the difficult part. Well, all I know is it says here that you're able to... I feel uh, like that's a horoscope. I appreciate that. It's not a horoscope. But it's you sci- can't no, say that about anybody. No, I looked it up. It's like scientific research on like a million left-handed people or something. Nice. Yeah, I'm left-handed. It's pretty, so it's pretty cool most of the time. I, I would not consider myself athletic. I'm a little athletic, but I figure it out. Like, if you look at me, like, I throw kind of funny, I run kind of funny, everything's kind of funny. I think it's mostly because I did not have a dad to teach me how to do that stuff. And so I just had to figure out how to do it by doing it. And so a lot of it looks a little quirky, but it gets the job done. Can I say something that might make you, I think we're on the thing, like, we're going to make you feel better. I think this will make you feel better. Go ahead. But I don't know. When I hear you say that, I'm more like, when I see you play sports, I'm like, wow, look how athletic he is. Well, that's very nice of because you. Because I'm surprised. Because we're making surprised. me feel good, so I think you're lying, but I like that. No, Thank I'm you. not lying. But I know when you take it the wrong way that I'm surprised you're athletic. But I think it's because for well, years do, and years, you, re, you talk re, yourself. It. But you talk yourself down, so then when I see you play sports, I'm like, huh, well, that's, that's, he's actually, that's really good. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Okay, all Lunchbox. Right. I appreciate all the kindness. Lunchbox, what do you have? Hey, Bobby, you love women? Oh, I love my wife. <laughs> what kind of question is that? <laughs> I love my wife. Go ahead. You love the U.S. of A? I do. I do, yeah. Well, I don't know if you're watching women's water polo at the Olympics and Flavor Flav from Public Enemy is in the crowd supporting them all decked out. And you're like, what is Flavor Flav doing with water polo? Well, back in May, the captain of the women's water polo team posted on Instagram and goes, hey, if anybody would like to sponsor our team, some of these women are working three jobs just to support their dream of going to the Olympics. Flavor Flav saw it and said, I'm a girl dad. I love women. I'm going to sponsor every <laughs> single woman on the team. And he signed a five-year deal and brought in other companies that sponsor the women's water polo team. Wow. That does make me feel good. I saw him taking pictures at the pool with everybody. Everybody. And security had to be like, dude, can you not take pictures while the games are going on? And so he's like, I mean, I guess I can't, but I'm not going to stop. It's just kind of funny. He just kept taking pictures. Do you see the pommel horse guy look like me last night? A young version of me. I got so many messages. I didn't. I didn't watch it live. The pommel horse is that one where the, the guys go back and forth, and yeah. it looks like they're going to rack themselves every time. Constantly. I mean, I'm it like, looks it's like, like an inch, half an inch, yeah, from an inch there. away from castration at any point. Uh, and this guy, he can't see, and he's sitting back with his glasses on. He takes his glasses off, and he's all squinting, and then he gets on the pommel horse and just rocks it. But obviously younger, but he's just kind of a nerdy guy. Until he like takes his glasses off and he's like all ripped up and stuff. But Steven Nedersick, the glasses wearing pommel horse dude, is the newest Olympic star. It was so funny. He took his glasses off and he could not see. And he's like, where is the horse? And then he gets on and they were like, can you not see when you get on the horse? He's like, see, that's all feel, baby. It was awesome. Golly, yeah, wow. That's impressive. That, that uh, event. And I probably <laughs> wouldn't have watched it unless everybody kept tagging me in videos going, this dude looks like you. Or, he, he is, yeah, his, when he has his glasses on, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what I look like with them off. Yeah. yeah. Morgan? Yeah, okay, so you say a lot of great Arkansas things don't make the news, right? Okay. Well, there is a former University of Central Arkansas basketball player who's playing in the Olympics. As, as what? He's a basketball player for Team Puerto Rico. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's not for Team America, but he's from Arkansas, and he's he's the like UCA was the only college that offered him a spot after he got a high school injury, and he's their all time leading scorer and three point shooter. So Puerto Rico has their own Olympic team. Yeah. Okay, I, which is so confusing. Hey, color me confused. Because, I thought they were part of the United States. Well, they're not a state, but they're they're a tributary. I think we like, I think we like lease them or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think we like pay rent. You know. Um, how about that? So yeah, one of your fellow Arkans, Arkansans, Arkans, we'll Arkansans is in the Olympics, and that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I appreciate you guys um, making me feel better. Did not have the best day, but I'm out of it. I'm here. Look at me. Boom, territory. Look, yeah, territory. Oh yeah, I knew that. I was just oh, kidding. I know. I said it. Nobody. I just wanted. I had to check myself to make sure that I was right. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. This is the Bobby Vaughn Show. Time for the news. Bobby's Big Stories. Let's go over and talk to Abby real quick, who's waiting on the phone. Abby, good morning. What's going on? Good morning. I just called. Uh, I was listening to yesterday's podcast. 
specifically the portion where Lunchbox and you were going and talking about the Olympics. And I was wondering if we can get like a, while the Olympics are going, an update during the show featuring Lunchbox because you could just hear his passion during, uh, while he was explaining what he saw. Uh, and so I was just wondering if that was a possibility. Maybe we can implement that during the show. Yeah. Just say we, I mean you all. We'll do it now. Uh, thank you for calling. I appreciate that. Right now, the U.S. has 20 total medals, which on the surface looks pretty cool because we're leading. Yeah, let's go. But we suck at golds. Oh. And that sucks. If we don't win golds and totals, we don't win. Mm. Well, uh, no, 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 no. Okay. If we don't win golds and totals, that is not a win. That's so like a you do, did good. Do we have the most? Stuff? Yeah, because we do have like like... 594 athletes that are there. Right. We need to win gold, and we need to win. But all those athletes had to make it. They didn't just get allowed to go. I mean, that's amazing. The US. I know. Uh, 20 medals. We're in number one. Number two is France. Sounds like some home cooking to me, if you ask me. Uh, number three, tied for third, is China and Japan. So, boom. Golds. <laughs> We're like fifth or sixth or seventh. We haven't even really got to our gold sport yet, I feel. Okay, so I thought swimming up. was There's supposed to be our time. gold sport. Well, we haven't done all the swimming yet. That's true. There's like 50 meters, 100 meters. Kayla ludecky has got two events. She hadn't even swam yet that she's the favorite in. So favorite Olympic memory so far because it just happened. Uh, two things. One, the fact that they did not put Caitlin Clark on the women's basketball team. And then that team ended up beating the Olympic teams. Hilarious to me. Because now the Olympic team's crushing people. They're going to crush. They haven't lost in like 56 games. The women's U.S. Olympic team. They're awesome. Go get that gold. But they lost to like Caitlin Clark back home as hilarious. So Yeah, you better get the gold though. No, they will. No one or, can play with or them. These guys aren't gonna care. No, that's true. <laughs> no, Although I was pretty I'm excited not- about the men's gymnastic team getting the bronze, and I'll tell you why. They okay. haven't won a uh, a medal at all in like 15, 16 years. Okay, Which so as long incredible. as you've been a loser for a long time, yeah. yes. you can get a bronze or a silver. No, but only occasionally. <laughs> we demand gold. Okay. We want gold. Did you ever see the sevens, the rugby? I saw, I think it was full rugby yesterday. And oh, I it know. was awesome. I don't know about full. I saw sevens and that woman who was just crushing people, just running them over. The uh, woman so, in black? Yeah. Did you ever figure out why she's wearing that? Maybe the team's color. I don't know. Or they put black on killers. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) This this one like little little tiny thing tried to tackle her. And Mm -hmm. she said, get off. Mm. It's a big stiff arm. So yeah, the U.S. added eight more medals at the Olympics. No golds yesterday. I'm feeling pretty good about today, though. I don't even know what's happening today. But we got a bronze in skateboarding. We got a silver and a bronze in women's swimming. Bronze in men's swimming. Bronze in men's fencing. And men's gymnastics, which I'm okay with, took the bronze. So there you go. We'll, we, we'll give you that count Some there. Golds today, I'm sure. Have you seen any Olympics at all? No, just whatever shows up on my. Yeah. Uh, you don't turn it on the TV? Not, well, not right now. I haven't turned on the TV. Oh my. I watch mine <laughs> online too on my phone. I'll just go to YouTube TV and watch it. Yeah. My favorite story, story though, has nothing to do with the Olympics. The Canadian soccer team got busted for oh. uh, using a drone. To watch another team practice. Oh, that's hilarious. And so they got penalized six points and they have to play, I think, one more match in the in the round. If they win that, they still go through. That's what's unbelievable is they have the hardest penalty and it would be almost impossible for them to advance. But they've won their first two games. So they win their third and they advance even with that. They're awesome, though. So that how did they think so they were going to get away with that? They have I mean, before, I'm sure. Oh. You, don't do, the that, first you time. don't do that the first time at the Olympics. Like, you're trained to do that at the Olympics like you're trained to do the Olympics. What does their little drone look like? A bird? <laughs> it flies up there. And yeah, but the coach got sent home. Like, the coach and, just, and like another another person. Yeah, yeah a couple wow. other people with the team and one of them that they're suspended from soccer for a year. They can't have anything to do with it. I mean, it's wild. That swift action. I hope they get a silver. It's USA. USA. And we don't get the gold. It doesn't count. Mm-hmm. Just go home. Oh, man, we look good against Germany. Woo! Go home. Gosh, man, those I ladies just, look like, good. Seeing anybody from America on the podium is awesome. No, or just even there. If you're on the podium, I want to hear <laughs> that magical song playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're That's just, it. I don't get it. We're different. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd agree. You're healthier. I would say. Yeah. I don't know. But it's still is pretty amazing them. to be the third best in the world at something. Yeah, if you're doing it, if I'm watching it, nah, I need you to be number oh, one. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying it. the two people I hold accountable. 
Anybody I'm watching on TV and myself. There's that meme that's going around with the Olympics right now where, you know, an Olympic athlete is doing something and they make the tiniest mistake. Like, it's so, it's not even, and we're sitting on our couches and we're just like, oh, pathetic. And it's like, we could never even get close to doing that. I watched Simone Biles on the beam do the triple flip. Do you mm -hmm. see that? What do you have to say? Awesome. Oh, okay. Good. No critiques. I don't know how to critique that. I mean, the toes toes weren't pointed perfect. but She did was... get like a tenth of a point um, when she was doing the floor routine. But she has a calf injury. She's continuing to roll. Anyway, there's your Olympic talk. Thank you. Uh, all the collaborators on Post Malone's new album were leaked. And, and here's the thing. Oh. It, it wasn't by somebody going, I'll show them. It was by somebody who had like a box of them at Target that were getting stalked away. And an image of that got out and you could see it. Oh. So it wasn't someone like putting it all online. Like back in the day, people would just like leak out music. So a list of the collaborators on Post Malone's new album was accidentally leaked early by Target of all places. A picture with all the information was uploaded by the wrong picture to the pre-order page. Oh, so they take a picture for inventory and it's supposed to go over there and they synced up the wrong pic. Oh, I thought maybe like someone stalking it, took a pic, sent it like to Instagram. their friend and then their friend's like, oh, and they threw it up online. So... So far, we know Post Malone, Morgan Wallen, Blake Shelton, Luke Combs. We knew he's working with Chris Stapleton. And, you know, I don't want to ruin it and say all the rest of them, but I'll say who they rhyme with. Lardy. Oh, okay. All right. I think yeah. I can figure that one out. Okay. Rad Raisley. Oh, really? Uh, oh, I got that one. Really Strings. Okay. Wait, what? Raleigh Rartan. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. I got the I got the really rings. But you're not going to... What? I got that one. What's the next one? Raleigh oh. Rartan. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Rainy River. I'm not even rhyming anymore. Now. Oh, I got that one. <laughs> You're not. Wait, what? Rainy. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Rainy Pilsen. Oh, that's good. Okay. Uh, Pelly Dole. Whoa. Oh. oh. <laughs> this is taking me way too long. <laughs> well, I, 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 there's one okay. I still don't have. I got it. I got it. Jim Figueroa. Really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, furnace. Okay. <laughs> Got that one. <laughs> Pink Williams Jr. Okay. <laughs> furnace? I mean, that one you just gave up no, on. No, Pink Williams Jr. I know, but you, why didn't you go Pink? Uh, I just got tired. Okay. Yeah. yeah just got me tired. too. Like, so we don't want to spoil it, but it's all out there. It's all on the news. Mm. Sounds like a pretty Which awesome. Which one is Lunchbox unable to figure out right now? He doesn't know who Billy Strings is. So oh, okay. that's why he's going, that's I don't why. know who it is. So mm -hmm. I'm not going back to it because he's not going to know him anyway. Got it. Got it. Would you say that's accurate? Oh, is that the person's name? Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. Was. Like blue, amazing bluegrass who, guy. Who's Ernest? Ernest. <laughs> I don't know. I, I couldn't get it. I, I couldn't get it. I, I, I couldn't get it. I was going, Fergie? Like, what? Fergie? Fergie and Fergie? So that's why I, was so, I, I was so confused, man. I didn't know what... Thank you. Well, we're going to play Morgan Wallen and Furnace right now. Okay? <laughs> Such a good song. All right, that's the end of the news for now.